Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment and learn about the new adaptive color and adaptive black and white profiles in Lightroom and Camera Raw. If you're not familiar with profiles, a profile is a set of non-destructive instructions that's used to determine how the colors and tones in a photograph are rendered. Now, in the past, the color and tonal adjustments made by the profiles were applied to the entire image, regardless of the contents of the image. Today, with the use of AI and machine learning, the new adaptive color and adaptive black and white profiles can also apply adjustments regionally, like in skies and the main subject of a photograph. Currently, the adaptive profiles can only be applied to raw files. Now, before applying the adaptive profiles, we'll want to reset any color or tonal adjustments that we've made to the image or the adaptive profile might give us unexpected results. In this example, when I apply the adaptive color profile, we can see that while it's making global adjustments, it's also adjusting the subject independently from the global edit. And it's also darkening down the sky area independently from the subject. We can use the profiles amount slider to increase or decrease the effect of the profile. Even though some of the adjustments are regional, None of the sliders are changed, nor are any masks appearing in the masking panel. Once the profile is applied, we can continue making adjustments to our photographs using all of the other controls. One word of caution, some edits that you make after applying an adaptive profile will require the profile to be updated. For example, if I've applied an adaptive profile and then use the remove tool to remove this person, we may see faint or fuzzy shadows of the original image in that retouched region because the profile isn't automatically updated. For this reason, you may want to do your retouching first and then apply the adaptive profile. Or when you see the warning icon under the edits icon, we can click to just update the profile in the basic panel or use the keyboard shortcut, command on Mac, control on Windows, plus shift and U. Likewise, if I add a lens blur to an image that has an adaptive profile applied to it, we'll want to return to the basic panel and update the profile. Also, you don't want to apply the auto option when using the adaptive profile because we might get unexpected results. Now, another important difference between the adaptive profiles is that the adaptive color and adaptive black and white profiles are optimized for both the traditional standard dynamic range mode and the recently introduced high dynamic range mode. I'm going to select the high dynamic range mode, but unfortunately the software that I'm using to record this video isn't going to record the higher dynamic range. So you're not going to be seeing the lovely detail in the highlight of the waterfall like I am on my HDR display. Now, when I apply the adaptive profile to this image, the profile is generating two independent sets of adjustments or looks, one for when we're working in standard or SDR and the other when we're working in HDR. I do want to point out that the Adobe adaptive profile restricts the bright regions to two stops over SDR white. So this restriction would be equivalent to setting the HDR limit to two stops. Now at this point we could continue making adjustments or we could export the file using a format that supports HDR like AVIF or JPEG and we could enable the HDR output to export a file that would automatically display the correct look depending on the device it's viewed upon. All right, if I want to convert this last image to black and white, we can click the black and white button, which selects the Adobe Monochrome profile by default, but we can see that there isn't a lot of detail in the background. So let's tap Y to see the before and after, and I'm going to push the Adobe Monochrome conversion to the before state. Now I'll select the new adaptive black and white profile, which will help make this image better by recovering information in the lighter areas of the background, as well as lighten the shadows on the jacket in the subject in the foreground. If you want to learn more about the profile gain table maps and the RGB lookup tables, 
which are used to store the tonal and color adjustments, I've included a link under this video to an excellent post on the Adobe blog. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.